Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well this evening. I want to thank everyone for joining us again. Um, we are not going to have any recording issues today as we did starting our uh, first session. So I'm grateful for that. Um, our topic today is health and safety. Um, and before I introduce our um, presenters, I want to go over the move-in day. We might have new people joining us. It might be a little redundant for those who were with us yet on Tuesday. So please bear with me. Um, I had our schedule for these sessions up uh, earlier. I hope you got a chance to note down those dates and times. Um, or move-in day on the 17th, which is a Saturday, August uh, 17th, uh, you will receive uh, an email from housing. And that will give you the time allocated for your move-in. You'll arrive a few minutes before that. You will be directed to parking lot O, which is the first thing you see as you come off uh, the main street, which is Sonoma Boulevard. Uh, from there, you are going to go uh, into the adjacent building. It's called uh, Physical Education and Aquatic Center. Uh, in there, your student will be able to pick up their uniform uh, sea bag if they're joining the core. If they're not join, joining the core, they will pick up some of their uh, required uniform pieces or dress code pieces. Uh, we will also have many of the people you'll meet over summer uh, and some new faces uh, who work with your students. They'll be there to, uh, to greet you, answer any outstanding questions, and spend some time with you while your students picking up their uniform. From there, you will get back into your car, put the newly acquired uniform pieces uh, in the car and your student and go to the res hall where you are um, going to move in. Most of the students, this year's class is 254 students, I believe. Um, uh, most of them are going to be in upper res. There'll be a few who will move into McAllister. Um, and so you'll go to your designated res hall once you arrive there, uh, you'll be helped um, with your belongings, moving your student in. The person driving the car will not be able to get out. They will have to move out of the queue, um, allowing other cars to pull up and uh, drop off their student as well as their belongings. Um, once inside the room, you'll have some time to um, set your student up. It's uh, a fun hour or so, we highly recommend that your student try out uh, their, their uniform pieces. If something is off, too big, too small, doesn't look right for whatever reason, um, bring those back down to the same place where you pick them up between 4 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Um, once um, that day is done, it'll be a little bit trickier to orchestrate any changes. So I highly recommend they try on um, pieces that look off and make any exchanges that same evening. Uh, once that's done, we invite you to uh, join the president in welcoming uh, families while your students will be practicing how to get into formation. Um, and as soon as you're done with the president, you come outside, your students will be ready in formation and you will have uh, the opportunity to cap your student, which kind of is, um, it's, a, it's a very emotional kind of a ceremony that's, um, that represents going from your child and a student to becoming a cadet at Cal Maritime. Um, I'll have lots of tissues for you. It's very um, fun. And, and like I said, it can get emotional. It takes only a few minutes. Um, after that, you're welcome to go um, take your student out for dinner or maybe even um, run any last minute errands. Uh, please take care of that and bring your student back by 630. They have floor meetings in their respective res halls, so they can't be out late that night. <clears throat> I did get some emails from parents wanting to know if they can visit their student the following day. Um, you, you can do that. Students will be done with dinner around 6, 6.30. But we encourage parents to let the students do student things and really get a chance to get to know their cohort, uh, make some new friends. Those first few days are very uh, important. So um, 
if you must see a student for some time that evening uh, is a little bit of an option. Uh, they do have things they can be doing, but they could potentially see you. Um, school starts on Wednesday, the 21st. Um, that's about all the details we have at this point for uh, the day you move in. Uh, I do request that you all wear comfortable shoes and dress in layers, which I forgot to men mention yesterday. Uh, Vallejo is pretty interesting. It can start out cool in the morning and gets warm by the afternoon and then starts to cool off in the evenings. So I highly recommend dressing comfortable, including the shoes. You might have a little bit of walking to do. A um, bit of housekeeping for today, for those who are joining us for the first time, please keep your devices on mute. The presenters will um, open, they'll tell you what they do, how they interact with their with your students, what their role is. Once they're done with that initial conversation, we'll open it up for Q&A. Um, while they're introducing themselves and talking about who they are, what they, what they do, something strikes as a question, please put it in chat. Um, I will be reading all the questions from chat and requesting uh, the presenters to respond. Um, at the very tail end, it, last five minutes or so, we'll open it up in case you were not able to type in your question because you were driving or for whatever reason, you can unmute and ask that question uh, often verbally. Um, presenters, I will not point out to who should answer the question. So feel free to take a question um, when you are ready to answer. Um, and I'll start off with the first presenter. And then if you can popcorn over to the next one, that'd be amazing. So there are, we have no time to waste with all of you here. Um, and with that, I will, um, from, from my screen, the first one is Dr. Wallace. He's our uh, counselor. So take it away, Ian. Uh, thanks, Vanita. Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Ian Wallace. I'm a licensed psychologist, and I direct the counseling and psychological services here as in part of the, in the uh, Student Health Center here at Cal Maritime, where I've been for approximately 11 years. So I'm happy to be with you this evening. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about myself, talk about how I'll share the website in a second, Vanita, if you can give me permission. Um, and just show you our, our main page, which will direct you to some of the basics that I want to cover today. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so just a little bit more about me professionally. Again, licensed psychologist, been here 11 years, um, have a small team. I'll get to them in a moment. Um, I've worked in other co college counseling centers, other medical settings, and I was a psychology undergrad student uh, at the College of New Jersey. Um, I've worked in many different settings. I work collabor collaboratively with Dr. Chow, our medical director, as well as many folks across campus. Um, personally, I'm married, got a couple kids. They're in middle school right now. Um, and I'm from New Jersey. I've lived in the Central Valley. I've lived in Southern California, even overseas, uh, Newcastle, England, uh, for a bit of time. Um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Um, let me go ahead and share the website. This will be the easiest way. Hopefully everybody can see this. Vanita, give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Grace. Okay, so what do, what, why is counseling and psychological services exist? One, it's a CSU requirement and it's standard at any university across the, the country and internationally. So mental health care is our primary focus. We serve students who pay a health fee, which contributes to the budget that supply, supports counseling and psych services, also known as CAPS. Um, and part of the things that we offer are individual counseling, group counseling, couples counseling uh, for some, we have, there's an overview here um, that has some key details about counseling being confidential. Those are state and federal laws that protect the right to privacy of legal adults, um, which the vast majority of incoming students and students overall uh, meet that criteria. Uh, we do work with families at times to provide um, information, coordinate care, uh, especially in situations where there may be more significant mental health concerns. Our hours and appointments are here. Um, typically it's Monday to Friday, we do have evening hours. Appointments are typically um, in person, but we do offer virtual appointments. Approximately 25% of our appointments are virtual. Um, and students can schedule their first appointment through the student health portal, which is here. Um, and there are some instructions, there are some basic forms to fill out like you would for any healthcare visit. 
Um, the 988 line, this is the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So we keep that on our homepage. We also have a confidential advocate I provide supervision for as part of the team. And this is someone who provides expertise with pre um, preventing and addressing sexual assault and harassment. I believe our Title IX coordinator and our advocate may be on a different call, uh, but just wanted you to know we coordinate with those folks. And then we have a, a what's called a basics program for alcohol uh, prevention and treatment. This can be voluntary or sometimes it's mandated if students are um, go through the conduct system for an alcohol violation. So you can see more information there. I do want to share, there's a lot here on the side. The one piece I do want to share is our team. So I work full-time here in the health center. Marie Ekmekjen is another full, is a full-time counselor who I supervise. Um, she works here in the health center. And then Mar Miriam Anthony um, is in training and works remotely. And she's also a graduate of Cal Maritime, but training to be a therapist. She's actually on the ship right now. And we have counselors on cruise um, every summer. And so that's part of the medical team out there. But going back up, um, just want to orient you. So more information about our site, about our services are here. Uh, counseling is not a barrier to licensure. Uh, it's not just one in five, but this past year, 30% of cadets, of st all students, attended, met with a counselor for at least one session, which is very high compared to other universities. So we're highly utilized. We work hard to destigmatize mental health. We de-emphasize diagnosis. We take steps to so that um, coming to counseling does not interfere with licensure, does not interfere with military service or other types of job opportunities in the future. We're very aware and sensitive to those issues. It's free of charge beyond the initial health um, services fee that you pay on a semester basis. There's no additional costs for any of the services we provide. Um, a little bit more, you can find out more about our services here. We do have an emphasis on diversity, equity, inclusion. So we um, prioritize and emphasize uh, treatment, multicultural counseling, specifically for students who uh, have identities from underrepresented groups that represent based on age, um, race, gender, class, sexual orientation. Um, you'll see some of our, our uh, information there. We also have information if those want for self-help and people can take steps, have resources, even find ther therapists they'd like in the community. That's an option. Um, if you're concerned about a student, if a faculty member is, if another a peer is concerned about a, a, a student, there's information here on our website, and there's also forms and policies. So the website is very full, up to date, has lots of information. Um, I guess the last thing I want to wrap up by saying is that the mental health services here are not only for the well-being of your you know, student and their, their health, their safety, but it also serves their academic goals, um, that good mental health, um, being, you know, stable, functioning well, really does serve their academics um, and their professional goals and development. So we really keep that in focus in combination with their health and well-being. Um, other than that, I'm happy to answer questions. Again, feel free to reach out to me at any time, not just during this call. Uh, our, my information is on the website under the About Us section, and you can always reach us at caps at csum.edu. And I'll stop there. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. You're welcome. We'll go to Dr. Chow. Um, before um, I start, um, there was one question, Ian, that you might want to address. Um, and so that says, is mental health counseling free to all students or only those who have Academy Health Insurance? Dr. Chow will deal with all the questions at the end. Oh, at the uh, end. They, they can keep writing their questions in. Gotcha. If we deviate, then it gets a little tricky. Thank all you. Right. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Grace Chow. I'm the Medical Director of Student Health Services, and I've been with the university for um, almost four years. Um, we take care, uh, we are a primary care clinic, um, and there are two providers here. There's myself and a nurse practitioner, Heather Hutchinson. And um, so we function um, as any normal uh, primary care clinic. So we see urgent care, um, we do same day appointments, you know, so if your student gets injured or hurt or sick, um, we are the ones that um, they can come to. Um, we also do a lot of physicals. So for the licensed track students, um, uh, that is U.S. Coast Guard exams. Um, we have a good number of students who are in athletics, so we do sports physicals as well. Um, we also do well visits, like well woman visits. Um, and 
have other things, you know, in terms of health prevention, um, treatment of sexually transmitted infections, reproductive health. Um, and um, we are able to provide basic lab, um, x-ray. Um, we have a dispensary where we provide common um, over-the-counter and some prescription medications. Um, and um, we work very closely with our counselors. Um, sometimes there are, you know, kind of unofficial consultations or official consultations. Um, and uh, we, I, we have a staff of um, three medical assistants that work with us. Um, when we're, we also process all the um, students' health forms, which hopefully your students have been sending to us. We've received about 120 so far, and I think um, we were told there are 254 students who have indicated they'll be matriculating. So um, if your student has not filled out their form, please encourage them to do so. Um, the forms can be found on our website. Um, Benita, do you, if you allow me to share, I can show them our website real quick. You should be able to share. Okay. Okay. And just let me know if you if you can see it. Is it? It's. We can see it. Okay, you're seeing the website. Um. So, this is kind of. A, a, talking about the medical care that is available. And then for after hours, evening and weekends, we do, um, they can just call the health center and there are options for that for mental health care and physical health as well. Um, we also um, just wanted to touch a little bit about um, the, the health forms because we're trying to get, get those in for everyone. Um, so, for the students that are entering majors that are um, involved with the Coast Guard licensing programs, um, they are located here and the, the majors are listed. Um, for the non-licensing programs, um, they are, it would be this set of forms that would be used. Um, below is just a little information on required medic, um, immunizations and further information about those. Um, you don't have to really worry about the other forms, um, except for maybe the sports physical form if, you're, if your student is involved with sports. Um, and another area where there are a lot of questions are health insurance. Um, so um, just talking a little bit, we do have a mandatory health insurance requirement, and that's because we are a very unique um, situation and students are involved with very hands-on things and welding labs and other sorts of things. So health insurance is required. Um, the school does um, um, provide a very good um, Aetna PPO health insurance. Um, however, if you your health insurance meets the minimum um, requirements to waive, then you can waive that um, that cost. Um, that needs to be done on an annual basis. And you can see here, there's a link here. Um, the dates um, are April 16th to September 24th for this year. Um, and if you click on there, that will take you to the area um, with information and kind of how to complete it. Um, so that can gives a little further information on our, on our student health insurance plan. Um, so I think that's about it for me now. Thank you, Dr. Zhao. And we will hop over to um, Craig Dawson. Craig? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Craig Dawson. I uh, am responsible for environmental health and safety, which is a very broad blank the the campus. Um, I work a lot with uh, faculty and staff on the campus and will occasionally do uh, guest presentations for faculty for things like hazardous materials handling, um, forklift use, different things like that. Um, but a lot of my interactions are, again, with with safety is oftentimes with 
cadet leadership when they get involved in different groups. We do different uh, safety inspections of the campus at different periods throughout the year. Um, and we also have a very uh, robust website with a lot of information on it. If you just, I won't go through it today, but if you just search search safety um, from our web page you'll be able to easily find that and and lots and lots of information there including our annual security reports that we put out and make available to everybody um, very accessible i'm also the designated person ashore for the ship <clears throat> which is um, a rather unique role in the maritime industry and primarily for uh, cadet purposes, um, I am a, another layer of uh, contact if people are on cruise and feel that they need to talk with somebody outside of the extensive network that already exists on the ship. Um, and so I uh, have a lot of contact. It's really nice being a small campus, so I do have the opportunity to to work directly with quite a number of different students. Um, and that's that's my piece. Thank you, Craig. And we will hop over to Officer Rutherford. Oh, there I am. Sorry, I'm trying to get all the buttons clicked. <laughs> I'm bad at this. Um, so I'm Sergeant Rutherford. I've been at the Cal Maritime Police Department for 12 years, um, and I've done quite a few of these, worked with a lot of students. Um, so today I'll just talk about some of the uh, programs that we offer as the, uh, the police department here and some of the most common questions that we receive. Um, first of all, we're, we're a 24-hour service, so we have officers here 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. Um, to help keep our students safe. And we also have, uh, so we have 11 officers, so we're slated for 11. Uh, we're working to get back there again. And we have um, a team of security guards, we call port security guards that also help uh, maintain the safety on campus. Um, we have some programs for your cadets uh, if they feel, um, if they feel like they're unsafe at any time, uh, day or night, and don't feel like they can walk to a location we do uh, courtesy rides courtesy transports um, to get your students there safely um, and offer a variety of other things uh, we are a full service police department so we respond to calls for service um, and help your students with whatever they may need um, and the cool thing about working here is that we we don't just respond to crimes we also respond to a myriad of other things um, if they ever just need people to talk to or play ping pong at night because they feel like they don't have friends, we we do all that with them. Um, so uh, the next most common question that we get is uh, um, for parking on campus. Uh, our department also covers parking. Uh, for freshmen or incoming freshmen, there's two parking lots available to them. It's uh, F lot and O lot. Um, they can purchase their parking permits at the cashier's office in the administrative build, administration building. And um, I believe that the price this year is $90 uh, for a semester to park on campus. Um, o lot and F lot are a little bit of a distance from campus, but the campus footprint is small. So there's a, um, uh, you know, um, parking is a premium. So freshmen get the two lots that are kind of the furthest and then they, they can work their way in. Um, also, if you don't want to pay for parking, there's a hill right next to the police department called Freshman Hill. Um, it's also called, its real name is Country Lane, and it goes between Maritime Academy Drive and Seaport. And uh, uh, they call it Freshman Hill because traditionally a lot of freshmen park on that hill. Uh, we are in a uh, little bit of a struggling community, so there is uh, some crime that does occur on that hill. So it's generally a little safer to park on campus than to park on that hill. Um, but the hill is right next to the police department, so we do travel it frequently to try to prevent that crime. Um, other things, uh, we work very closely with the agencies surrounding us, so we have a lot of help from Vallejo PD, the Sheriff's Department, CHP, and also um, across the bridge from us is the Contra Costa County Sheriff. Uh, we get a lot of help from them as well. Uh, we do take police reports and anything police related is what we take care of here. Um, 
I believe that's all. If there's more questions, I can type them in the chat and I'll get to them at the end. <laughs> Thank you, officer. Um, any last uh, comments from any of our presenters before I take the questions? Um, I, I just I can chime in uh -huh. just quickly sure. on the mental health side, just to be explicit, like some of them, there are lots of counselors, uh, there can be different counselors, but um, our counselors are licensed or li on the licensed track, and we provide mental health counseling for things like sadness, loneliness, anxiety, substance use, eating concerns, uh, discrimination and harassment, uh, those relationship troubles, academic difficulties, just wanted to name some of the you know more common issues that students come to CAPS for. Thanks for that opportunity. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to delve into the questions now. Um, I'm gonna, when I look at them, actually, I'll just delve in. Um, we did our best to measure the uniforms. You got the answer to that. Uh, there will be an opportunity to exchange them on move-in day should your student not be able to do that or can't find the right size. There's there will be opportunity for them to head to the bookstore during their breaks uh, the next three days um, to, to make some of those exchanges. So it's not like they can't do it. Uh, it's best to do it on, on that Saturday. Um, next one is we're coming from out of state. Is there a place to ship belongings? We don't encourage that. There is, I, I mean, we don't have the space or the personnel to accept these um, shipments and hold on to them and give them to the right person at the right time. So we actually do not do that. However, if it's something small and urgent and uh, you'd like for me to hold on to them, you can send a small package to my attention with some information on the package itself, who it is for, and I will do my best to accommodate you and your student. So email me separately and let me know what you're thinking. Um, Yes, JP, please stick around after and let me know what your questions are from Tuesday. I'm happy to um, respond. Um, as I let you all know in my email, and again, I'm happy to share that when these recordings are sent to me from Zoom, there are two other departments on campus who have to touch those recordings in, and post them. So it's always going to be a few days from the session day when they get posted. The first one is going to take the longest because the person dealing with it is their first rodeo doing this. So she's going to uh, she's probably going to take a few more days to get it uploaded. After that, it'll probably be a little bit more uh, efficient, but definitely allow some days from the session to when you can see the recording. Um, you for I forgot to ask about when it is allowed for student to wear. So students will be able to wear normal clothes, street clothes, civilian clothes after 430, as long as they are not in class um, or in the in the dining hall. Once 430 happens, they, they can be in their civilian clothes. And of course, weekends uh, and before 7 a.m. So um, is mental health counseling free for all students or only those who have academy health insurance? No additional charge. It's covered in the health fee. Although I mentioned in the chat that the insurance is a separate requirement, but we do not bill insurance. We can work with individuals to help coordinate a referral to an outside provider who takes insurance, but here at the Student Health Center in CAPS, we do not bill insurance and it, uh, there's no additional charge for the counseling we provide. Um, coverage is, oh, uh, did, <laughs> Dr. Wallace did try and respond in chat. So um, I believe there may be a healthcare form for a physical required for student athletes. Can you tell me where to find that form? Dr. Chow? Yes, that's on um, the under forms um, and the health center. If you put in student health center as your search and look for forms and under, if you scroll down to the bottom um, of the page, it will say um, sports physicals and you can click on that for the sports physical forms. Dr. Chow, um, while we're covering some of the other questions, would you be so kind as to find that link and put it in chat for us? Sure. And parent, parents can copy and paste where they want. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. 
Um, so I'm going to probably butcher this vaccine's name. Uh, but uh, do we have meningococcal vaccine requirement or is it? We do. We have meningococcal conjugate and meningococcal B vaccine requirement. Um, those can be waived um, if you have documentation from a healthcare provider. Does Academy Health Insurance cover international travel like when they are on, sh on the ship? Um, there is international um, travel uh, insurance so that if there needs to be any transportation, um, but otherwise, if, if they are using the school's health insurance, that will cover them. Um, but if it's been waived, then it would be under the presumably the parents' um, health insurance policy. So if there was an example, student is on the ship, has uh, an injury or an illness, they have Kaiser, just using an, uh, a, a provider, um, they would be treated wherever they are. And then what happens, Dr. Chow? Um, I think it, it depends on the severity of the, the injury or illness, um, whether they would be stabilized and then transported home. Um, I don't know that much about Kaiser and what they would do as far as international um, health. Um, so that that would, um, I'm sorry, I'm just not that knowledgeable about the Kaiser system in the internet. Well, I'm just, I just picked Kaiser because it was, um, you know, so families who will request a waiver from the Academy's insurance should check their benefits on international um, travel. Uh, and if they have any follow-up questions to reach either Dr. Chow or send an email to orientation at csum.edu and we'll follow up with you. Um, how do we know if our health insurance waiver has been accepted? Assuming it's accepted, uh, can it be used for all campus health services? So this is what's a little confusing. So we, health insurance fees are paid and that um, kind of, that is what covers students being able to be seen on campus. And that is separate from the health insurance. So the health insurance is for things that are beyond the scope of a primary care health center on a, on a campus. So if there are other specialist requirements um, or just kind of other care, then that would be done under the other health insurance. Um, and that can be Kaiser or you know different other types of health insurance. But um, that that's kind of a little confusing piece of the student health fees that, that cover the student being able to be seen on campus for health concerns and then the health insurance that covers if your student has to go to an emergency room or have surgery or have hospitalization. That's where that coverage um, comes in. So hopefully that is, um, that's clear. Thank you. So you're saying that there are two types of coverages. One is student health fee, that covers Dr. Wallace's uh, services in counseling um, and everyday cold cough, tummy ache, those kinds of things. And for anything beyond that, the, the insurance that people have kicks in, whether it's the academy insurance or some other family insurance that they can then utilize. Yes. Yep. Um, we went through, you went through that um, very, uh, no, I'm going to go to the previous one. Uh, what if you already have primary care health insurance? Do you still have to get the Academy health insurance? No. Yeah, no, you don't. Um, and again, it's it will be on the Student Health Center website. Um, if you go to required insurance, um, there's a, there, there's a yellow button that's, there's a, probably three or four different places on the page where you can click for um, health insurance waiver. Um, I've also been sending out um, emails um, and I provided um, Benita with that to provide the parents also that with that information that has a link um, as to where, but um, that's also, I can, I can put that in the chat as well. Uh, moving uh 
from health to parking. Um, so, doc, uh, not doctor, uh, Officer Rutherford mentioned that if you are uh, an incoming freshman, you may apply for a parking permit. Um, is it true, uh, Officer, that we can the students can apply and on a case by case basis, their a permit is approved and they can park in those designated spots? Uh, yes. So all freshmen, it'll be available for parking lot O and F. Um, I see some of the other questions about uh, the parking lot. So O is at the front of campus closest to Sonoma Boulevard. Uh, and then F is uh, further into campus up by the facilities department. Um, so O lot is, I mean, I, first I'll say that our, our crime stats here is far, far below our neighboring city, Vallejo. So we, we do a very good job. We're very proactive here. We prevent a lot of crimes and catch a lot of crimes before they occur. Um, but O lot is the closest to Vallejo. So uh, that is a lot where more crime does occur. It's not, I wouldn't say it's common, um, but I say it does occur. We had some catalytic uh, converter thefts and maybe one or two in the last year stolen vehicles um, from parking lot O. Um, parking lot F is uh, further into campus. We get far, far less. Uh, it's it's so far into campus. Uh, it's very rare to get something up there. I won't say it ever. Ha it never happens, but um, it's less common. Um, and then the next question, the most common crimes or issues that we need police attention. We see a lot of different things on here in regards to students. Alcohol is a big uh, issue with the with the freshmen generally. Um, so uh, maybe speak with your students about uh, alcohol safety and um, consuming, you know, uh, wait till they're 21 to consume alcohol. It is a dry campus. So uh, that is something that we deal with quite a bit here. I um, mean, something that I can uh, attest to the most common thing probably that we see on campus. Uh, uh, recently, there's been a huge uptick in students uh, not understanding the dangers of just the Internet and social media. A lot of students are meeting people online um, that are uh, requesting photographs or different types of things and then blackmailing the students for money uh, or uh, releasing the information. Um, and a lot of, and it's too, you know, it's so difficult to catch those people. A lot of time they're, they're not even in the United States. And so uh, I would say the, the most important thing, because that's really the biggest issue we've seen in the last two years, a huge uptick in that uh, blackmail. So just talking to your students about uh, what's safe on the internet, what you should and should not release and who you should and should not talk to um, would be probably the most uh, important thing, probably the most impactful thing um, uh, for us and then what we're seeing. Um, online dating, since that's become huge, it's also um, push that way. Uh, and then also, if I didn't mention this earlier, and uh, Craig Dawson can also speak to us, he works tirelessly on, on this, but we have something called Cleary here, and it's a report, reportable crimes that occur on campus. And uh, it's all um, documented on the, uh, the website. You can go to the police services portion, and you can see every crime that's occurred on campus and where it has occurred and what crime it was. Um, and so I'd encourage you to look at that so you don't you're not too shocked at what occurs. Um, but like I said, I, I don't think you'll be too shocked. We're far if you've looked at the the city of Vallejo stats and our stats were well below um, of them. And again, we attribute that to our, our officers, very uh, uh, proactive and we're constantly patrolling and preventing things. So. I believe that answers. Was there any more questions, Renita, you, you caught? Or? Well, we might see some, um, but as I scroll down for, for right now, that was answers to two of the, you. your questions. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Wallace, thank you for those links. Um, do you talk to parents who are struggling with their students? Uh, do you talk to parents who are leave, uh, who are struggling with their students leaving? Uh, I did respond in the chat, but I'll just say briefly, yes. Whether it's here at orientation in person, after orientation online, a phone call or video, it's not counseling because our services are specifically counseling. Mental health services are for students, but this is in the realm of consultation and support. So I'm happy to talk with you or one of my counselors um, regarding those concerns or type of concerns. And I'll provide our contact information there in the chat as well. 
for mental health services, what if students need medication? Are there uh, psychiatric referrals? Dr. Chow, do you want to answer this? Sure. We do carry um, basic antidepressants. Um, if they are on other medications, um, uh, basically the medications we carry are the generic version. So if they are kind of augmented treatment with other kind of medications, we don't carry, we don't provide those. Um, we generally don't provide control drugs. Um, we can't, you know, kind of depending on the, the student's requirements, um, we have some students that continue care with their psychiatrist from home. Um, and then we can kind of, we can check in with them because we are here physically and convenient and available. Um, and then often the students, you know, may choose to talk with a member of the counseling team as well. Um, generally, if it's a more comp complicated kind of um, situation, then we would refer outside um, to a psychiatrist. Thank you. Uh, what support is available for students dealing with a family member passing or other significant personal issues? Um, and then along those same lines, what resources and accommodations are available? I can respond. I put in the chat as well, but the counselors who are licensed and trained in CAPS provide are trained in grief counseling, uh, in responding to trauma, uh, dealing with PTSD, depression, anxiety, a number of diagnoses. So uh, we support one another. There are other places on campus where they provide um, like outside of the formal mental health treatment that would provide uh, grief support of different sorts. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about the care team? Sure. The care team is a group of uh, staff and some faculty members that meet on a biweekly basis every two weeks um, to discuss students of concern. And we do this in a collaborative approach to address any emerging concerns in a preventive fashion. Sometimes it's in response to, it could be uh, a loss and there can be different types of response from um, a, the belongingness and support to a formal treatment, health, medical, or psychological, or some type of um, academic support that's needed or um, different types of intervention, a core member, a leadership issue. Uh, there's, the team is multidisciplinary, so we try to approach the situation from multiple vantage points and do that, again, um, sharing information. A, a caveat here is important to note, although I'm a member, I take the notes, um, and Dr. Chow is as, as well, the, the records and the information that's shared in counseling and in the Student Health Center does have privacy rights that can, you know, uh, prohibit us from sharing the details of those visits. And so the information generally shared is under what's called FERPA. It's a federal law allowing a need to know um, right to share information with colleagues. And in this case, um, to support students going through a variety of different types of concerns. Thank you. Um, are there nutrition or dietitians available for students to consult about meals? Unfortunately, we're not large enough a campus that we have access to um, dietitians. Um, we do have um, peer health educators that sometimes talk a little bit about that. And actually, um, now that I think about it, um, we do have some athletic trainers and other people who are more trained in um, nutrition that we will probably be utilizing. We've been um, kind of starting the collaboration for the upcoming year. So there will probably be more available this year than has been in the past. Um, and also I'd uh, encourage uh, you to ask your student to work directly with Karen Gobel, who you met on Tuesday, um, and ask any specific questions with regard to nutrition uh, and, you know, available accommodations or diets. And uh, they she she is a contracted uh, employee through Sodexo, which is a large um, food services contractor, and they might be able to support your students. So um, use them as a resource if it is necessary. Um, maybe you can ship to a UPS store, okay. Um, Dr. Wallace is putting some information in there. What do I need to get a parking pass as a freshman? Officer? 
so uh, it's going to be online on the on the police uh, web page. You can purchase your parking pass on there. So if you go to the parking section and then your student can go to the cashier's office in the administration building and they'll pay the, the fee for it. They also can help uh, point you in the right direction to purchase the, the parking pass. Um, and then I saw one more. Um, how does a parking pass affect a transfer student? Um, and they're, are they considered freshmen? So they, they are not. So you can purchase a parking pass for a transfer student. Uh, but they, they do get, so generally we haven't had an issue with this, but uh, we consider them freshmen uh, in the beginning, if they're, if all the parking passes for lower campus are taken, we'll consider them a freshman. If there's parking passes left over, they'll get the first, the first dibs as a, a transfer student. And so, uh, we haven't had run into that problem before though. So they should have the, they should be able to get the, the parking pass. Thank you. Um, should the students get physical exam and forms completed prior to starting school? Yes. Um, we, um, that is more important for kind of the, the license track students, but um, yes, we have immunization requirements um, and request that we receive health forms completed by all students. Um, you know, we will accept them, um, you know, until early August and actually until, um, uh, orientation, but we prefer to get them earlier because sometimes we need, do need to request further information from healthcare providers. And right below Lisa's comment is uh, Dr. Chow's uh, link that she's added where you can find most of these forms. Um, I did let um, families know that Clary report is what uh, Officer Rutherford were, uh, was referring to that Craig works on and it gives you a lot of those, uh, a lot of data on crime on and around campus. Um, the required immunizations on health forms are different than the ones on the health page. Can you please clarify exactly what shots are required for the school year? Um, the ones listed um, on the on the page are the ones that are required. Um, the ones. There are required immunizations and then there are highly recommended ones. So the the health forms, um, we haven't reconciled those. That was a more recent policy change. Thank you. Um, so again, uh, we are talking about parking for our incoming freshmen. It's like um, Derek pointed out, it's advisable for for those freshmen to not bring cars so that they can really immerse uh, into the campus experience, do not leave campus every weekend and uh, things like that. So we prefer the students not bring them, but the police department will make some exceptions and approve uh, permits, um, especially if they're transfer students. Depending on how many uh, units they are bringing in, the transfer student is bringing in, they may be considered a freshman or sophomore or junior, depending on uh, where they are in their um, transfer units as applied towards their major. So where and how to get cadet handbook. So the current handbook that is for the year 23-24 is what Derek might have uh, looked up and um shared the information from. The most current handbook is being um, designed and, get, uh, and written as we speak. As you all know, we have had a change in how we proceed this coming fall with our uh, core and opt-in uh, option. So we've had to make some changes and we're in, in the middle of completing that handbook. That handbook will be shared directly with students via a, a platform called Canvas, where they'll have the ability to read it. It's, it's a platform they have to use for all their classes. And once um, we have completed this book, probably uh, by September, and I'm working on it, so I know probably by September, I will have a secondary uh, format for the book that I will be able to put online. So it might be uh, in September that 
uh, that we have that available to everybody uh, for review. But the current one is there, which is um, which is uh, changing for for fall. Uh, unrelated to medical, where do you uh, get a campus job and how many are available? We'll wait. Uh, we're running really close to our end time. Please wait for uh, that on, uh, you'll get that answered probably next Tuesday. So hold on to that thought. Um, handbook is, yeah, thank you, Dr. Wallace. Uh, what specific health forms are needed? Do they need Coast Guard exam prior to starting school? I think we answered that, uh, Dr. Chow. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. What was that question again? Specific the... health forms and uh, exam. Oh. Prior. Correct. They need to do the health forms that are um, that are links for. They do not need a Coast Guard exam prior to starting school. Um, for the licensed track students, the requirements um, in our health forms are basically this come from the requirements from the U.S. Coast Guard exams, and that's most relevant when it comes to color vision testing. Um, thank you. Lisa wants to know who they can contact if they haven't heard from their student. So um, your students are adults and they have a very high course load. They have other commitments if they're in the core. They have formation in the morning. They have to stand watches. Um, they uh, you know, want to participate in college types of events. So um, they might not get back with you right away. It's nothing to worry about. However, if you wish to uh, contact one of us, I've seen, I just saw that Officer Rutherford has, is ready to talk, but before yeah. I give him the mic, I just want you to know that I'm your liaison uh, on campus and you're welcome to reach out to me, but officer. Yeah, we, we get this uh, a thousand times a semester, parents call because they <laughs> can't get a hold of their students. Uh, and I can tell you never once have we lost a student. <laughs> They're always here. No. Um, but if you are concerned, uh, our, I forgot to say this earlier, our dispatch number is 654-1176, that, uh, 707-654-1176. You can call that anytime you'll get a hold of Benicia Dispatch. They dispatch for Cal Maritime PD. You can tell them you want a welfare check on your student and we'll go to their room and, and uh, wake them up and uh, tell them, hey, brush your teeth, get ready and call your mother because she's asking. So uh, we do that. <laughs> very, very, very frequently. So uh, don't be afraid to call. But uh, like I said, I've been doing it for 12 years. I've probably had thousands and thousands of those and never once have we lost a student. So um, don't don't panic. We get parents panicking every year. <laughs> um, so, but we, we would like for you to give them the space to become independent um, adults and um, learn how to advocate for themselves. So uh, as much as Officer Redford is happy to help you, uh, or I am, uh, please give them some space and, and let them do their thing. Don't worry too much about it. Say, and I'm saying that because, you know, I've, I've put my kid through school and there's other parents here. Craig has probably done the same thing. Um, so um, we won't lose your kid. Don't worry about it. The, does the school insurance cover dental? Grace? I, I answered yes um, in the chat. No, unfortunately, it dental insurance is separate from medical health insurance. Okay. Um, do those, oh, for a non-police, so um, Dr. Wallace is responding as well. I don't know if families are able to keep up with all the chat responses. Um, any other questions? JP, you could stay behind and ask those questions uh, if it doesn't require our presenters to be there. All right. Um, is there anyone who would like to uh, use the um, raise your hand and ask their question verbally. Please do so now. Uh, 
Hi, okay. can I ask a question? Oh. Yes. Um, I think I put it in the chat, so sorry. I know there's been a lot of questions about parking, but on the parking website, when you search parking, for freshmen, it asks you to send an email to an email address that's parking at uh, csum.edu. Um, I, I have done that a few times and not gotten a response. So I guess I'm just a little bit confused about the process there, whether it's actually you can pay and get a permit online or whether you actually need to come to the campus. You, you can pay and get a permit online. Uh, if you, if you tell me your finding, name. I'm not oh. finding that link, so. Oh. So if I may, mm -hmm. um, officer, I yeah. always request families who are on this call to send their questions that need follow-up to orientation at csum.edu, which I've uh, put in the chat. And once I get those questions, I will follow it up with the appropriate uh, staff or department. So uh, who was it? Catherine, if you could email me, I'll get you the response uh, for what might be going on with your with your parking permit. Thanks. Is that okay, Officer Rutherford? Yes, that's great. Perfect. Any other verbal questions? All right. Um, thank you presenters for being here. I know it's uh, an extended day for you, so totally appreciate uh, your time and uh, your expertise and bringing um, some comfort and satisfaction to the families who worry about their student that they're going to trust us with. Um, so thank you again for being here. I love Dr. Wallace's little emoji there, the sparkling heart. Uh, and I want to thank all the families for being there for their students, for their interest and in making sure that they can support uh, their student and partner with us. And on that uh, note, I'd love for you to remind your student to please send us their photo. I'm still really behind on getting photos uh, from your student. So please, um, tonight at dinner, just request them to upload their photo and send it to us so we can get their IDs ready when they arrive on campus on August 17th. Uh, once again, thank you very much. I'm here for a few minutes um, for those who might have uh, any follow-up questions. Presenters, thank you and goodbye. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Benita. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks, good night. Good night. All right, JP, you get to go first. Um, is there a list of items not allowed? Yes. Um, so anything that's not on the list that says what to bring is off. If you have a very specific item that you that's boggling you, ask me. Uh, about that specific thing. But if it's not on what to bring, it's please don't bring that. Um, already put first question. Thank you for the information. All right, uh, photo, where to upload it? I just um, added that link and I'm ad adding it again here. Um, oops, let me just do that everyone in the meeting and here we go this is the link to upload your uh port pass thank you karen for putting the what to bring list up there um for photos what if my hair is messy and isn't to grooming standards yes please send the photo we'll do your id and if for some reason the director for cld which is um leadership and development, it has a problem with that specific photo, we'll take another photo locally and give you another ID card. So don't worry about that. Just send the photo for now, messy or hair or not. It's all right, Joseph. Um, okay, we received a book in the mail that said freshmen have to read it. How require, it is a requirement. Students, it's mandatory and it will be 
it's part of their orientation. There's going to be a discussion on it. There'll be students who will break out in smaller groups and talk about it. It's a way for them to have a common topic and to share what they took away from the book. So it's very important. It's a first step towards making friends and uh, learning something uh, that will um, kind of challenge them and show them um, something that they might not. It takes a lot of work in selecting those books. Um, it, it's really an important step. They must read it. Uh, I will only for this small group let you know that you can also from a local library get it in uh, audio version and they can listen to it, but they must come fully prepared to discuss the book. Uh, asking for a friend, he is also on the call. What is the penalty for not reading it? Penalty is, there isn't a penalty. There's going to be nothing other than um, you, you know, it's it's an opportunity for growth and it's an opportunity for you to, um, to get to know students who are going to be in your cohort. So please do read it. Uh, when will roommates be assigned? So star res is uh, receiving, still continuing to receive um, um, submissions. So it'll be soon. It'll, they'll finally get their roommate and their uh, allocation of room plus their slot towards the end of this month. Um, thank you, because I got a mullet. Don't be, it's not unfortunate. You can have a mullet, Joseph. Send us the photo. And if anything needs to change with the photo, we can do it later. I'd rather give you... Uh, an ID card that works and lets you get into your room and into your building, then uh, have to worry about it later, okay? Does sending an AP exam score affect my classes? As in, can I skip certain ones? So please do send all your transcripts to the to admissions and they will um, work with the registrar to register you. We block register all our students and that will happen towards the end of this month into the start of August. Um, so hi, Marks. Good job, JP. And we will look at all of those things before we um, register for you the required for you, for the required classes for the semester. Uh, Hunter, you can unmute and ask your question. Hi, this is Hunter's mom. Oh, okay. Um, Irene. Hi, yes, nice yeah. to see you again. Likewise. <laughs> Likewise. So, um, just a quick question. I know the immunization thing, we've been going through that list. Mm -hmm. My question was in the TD and TDAP, um, there was a comment in there that said there's a series. And even though we've done them all, it says the booster has to be within 10 years. Mm -hmm. And ours is like at 11 or 12. Do we need and to worry about that or should we send everything in any way and just do that later? I would just do it rather than send it and then have to go back and take care of it. If it's outside that window, get the immunization, send the new new documentation. If you absolutely want me to ask Dr. Uh, Chow, use the orientation email that I've shared. Send me the question. I will forward it to Dr. Chow and either get you the answer or she'll respond directly. Okay, thank you so okay. much. Of course. Um, does sending an AR, uh, we answered that. Also continuing off that question, can I just send straight from uh, my AP classroom or is um, there, we need official transcripts. So uh, JP, send me an exact uh, as an email with your exact question about how this this transcript should be sent, and I will work with admissions to get you the answer. I'm not an expert on how best uh, these transcripts uh, are to be received by them. So, uh, <clears throat> AP exams should be part of your high school transcript. Send me a question, exactly what you want to know and I will um, follow up with you. Orient, uh, arena orientation at csum.edu. That's um, your best bet to get your question answered. I just wanted to clarify. Yes, mm -hmm. I know AP exams are part of transcript, mm -hmm. but past the exam, so that's separate. 
because you can take AP class and then you take exam, which yes. he passed. So it's yes. a college credit. So yes. basically he won't need to repeat this class, right? So we somehow need to give you this information because he just got his score a few days ago. Perfect. So we did not know until we got this course just on Monday. Yes. How do we give it to you? And we Sandy? have some last year as well. So we I have like five answer. classes he passed. Mom, 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 I know how to send them in. I just didn't know okay. if I had to send okay. them in okay. email. We have saying, a hey, know something. Okay. okay, perfect. Any doubt, email me and I'll get you the answer. I don't know Thank the you. answer to that. Yeah. I got you. Thank you okay. so much. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Second to last question. Can we pick up specific people for roommates? Um, I don't believe so. Um, housing is going to be part of uh, the sessions. They will be on uh, Thursday, August 1. It's a good question for them. In the meantime, you could email housing at csum.edu and ask your question. They can let you know, or you can send me an email and I'll find the answer and get it to you. I don't know what the deadline is. So again, either housing at CSUM or orientation at CSUM, send us your exact question. And the answers I don't know, you send me, send it to me in writing, then I can find the answer and get back with you. Who else? Anyone else with questions? All right. Uh, yeah, I have one more. Uh, okay. I'll just say it. Okay, so... Um, I received an official uh, Cal Maritime scholarship, and I was wondering, is that just automatically deducted from the payment I need for application, or do I need to receive it and then give it back? So you got one from Cal Maritime? Yes. Mm, I don't, again, I don't know how best to answer that, uh, but on Thursday 25th, financial aid and student um, billing will be um, on on the call and they'll be able to answer that question. And it's not too late for you to ask that question on July 25th. That I know for sure. Okay, because so, I, I just received an email. It just said like, hey, you got it and yes. nothing else. And then also I was in Japan when I got the email and I only realized about a month later, especially since I thought I just didn't get it because it said, oh, we'll notify people in mid-April if they okay. want it. And there was nothing okay. then, so... Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So you did get it. That's great. We have the money. We'll uh, put it in your billing and get it to you. But the exact way of how it's going to happen, uh, just hold that question um, and ask on um, from financial aid on the 25th. It's not too far. Gotcha. Okay, All thanks. right. It's so cool that a student is on this call. Very nice. Are students not supposed to be on this call? Uh, it's it's supposed to be for families, but I'm so stoked that you're on. Perfect. I'm, the, I'm pretty sure most students here are going to be legal adults. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are trying to uh, address these um, these questions and areas to answer parent questions. But yes, I'm. That's why I said I'm so excited that you're on. Perfect. Um, okay. What is hey, the next again. session? Oh, absolutely. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. Uh, the next session, and let me share the schedule with you so you can either take a screenshot or you'll know what to do, uh, what those sessions are. Uh, the next one is my favorite. It is um, Sense of Belonging. It's going to be three or four panelists, and they're going to talk about all the extracurricular stuff we offer to your students. So when they call you and say, I'm bored or I got in trouble because there wasn't anything to do, uh, you'll know that's not a fact because there's lots of other stuff going on on campus that they can participate in. All right. Um, what student, uh, with students being here, less for parents to explain to them. Yes, Irina, that is so true. All right. If there is nothing else, I would like to thank you for being such awesome family members and parents. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in, on Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye, everyone.